Oh, it's you, cutie. To what do I owe the honor of your visit? Are you here to peruse the library? Or perhaps you're here to visit a certain someone? <laughs> as considerate as ever, I see. Alas, what rotten luck. You just so happen to have caught me in the middle of some important work. I'll have to treat you to afternoon tea some other time. Wait, you're actually busy? With work? That's not a sight you see every day. <laughs> you're right. The last time I was this consumed with research must have been way back at the academia. I haven't done this much thinking for a long time. It's rather exhausting. <laughs> if you're that interested, why don't you join in on the fun? What do you say? Want to help me relive my days as a scholar? It's not polite to pawn off your work on other people, you know. Is that a no, then? It will be quite the rare opportunity to work together. And you would, of course, be generously rewarded. But if you don't want to... As you probably know, the Knights of Favonius have long conducted research on alchemy. But most of that research has been carried out in a laboratory setting. The public's knowledge of alchemy is quite minimal. Which means that up to this point, most of our research and discoveries have remained quite distant from people's daily lives. We've put a lot of mora into the research, but have very little to show for our efforts. Noting this disconnect, Jean decided to start an initiative where we'd share the fruits of our labor with the people. For now, that means introducing them to several different kinds of alchemical potions. As it happens, I already have some experience with this work. Even though I usually work at the library, I have lent my support in the past to the management of the Knight's Potion Supply. Potioneering was also one of my academic specializations back in the day, so Jean thought I was the best person for the job. But to create potions practical enough to support the daily needs of the people, a lot of adjustments had to be made to the ingredients we use, and the overall alchemical process also needed to be simplified. All in all, what started as a relatively simple research project soon evolved into something exceedingly complicated. So, are you asking us to help you with your research? Cause, uh, you're not exactly talking to two alchemy experts over here. <laughs> no worries. I've already thought of the perfect job for you two. Alchemical practices are becoming more and more advanced, but there's still a disconnect between our research and the general public. What we really need is to collect feedback from the people. Otherwise, we won't truly know if we're satisfying their needs. But if we want to conduct research and collect feedback at the same time, we need to go about things in a more efficient way. So, I thought the best way to do that would be to open up a potion shop. That way, we could continue to handle the alchemy side of things while also being able to interface with the public and understand their needs. Oh, it's like killing two pigeons with one stone! Smart idea, Lisa! Well, of course. And who better to take on this job than one of the most accomplished among our ranks, the Traveler? When I was at the Academia, students would often help out with each other's research projects. I'm sure my cuties wouldn't want to miss out on the opportunity to experience that sort of youthful enthusiasm for themselves. Yeah, you make it sound nice and all, but Paimon still thinks you're just looking for a way to pawn off your work. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. When all our work is done, I will personally see to it that you're generously rewarded. All of the initial preparations have been made, so let's head to the shop. We'll finish our discussion after we get there. This is the shop. Wow, 
Looks like you've made a lot of preparations already. Did you do this all by yourself? <laughs> it was a group effort. A whole bunch of knights helped out. Jean secured the initial funds to open the shop. Albedo and Sucrose provided the ingredients and equipment needed to brew the potions. And the logistics company is handling the provision of all future supplies. Now with your help, it's like an additional weight has been lifted off my shoulders. The knights have been busy spreading the word about our shop over the past few days. So, we should be ready to open once we've finished our final preparations. Okay, let's not keep everyone waiting then. Why don't you take these ingredients and try your hand at brewing a potion? All you need to do is add the ingredients into the cauldron, follow the steps provided, and you're good to go. Looks like you've finished your potion. Now, all we need to do is put it on display for sale. Looks like we're done with all the prep work. Why don't we take a short break over there while we wait for customers to arrive? like everything is going well. You've already sold your first batch of potions. Not a bad start at all. As for what potions you should brew next, we'll need to consult the news from the market. 
That means staying up to date on the latest news and trends to try and anticipate people's needs. It's an essential skill when it comes to business. Uh, that sounds kind of hard. <laughs> Don't worry. I already took it upon myself to compile all the latest news on the market for you. What do you think? Have any ideas on the kinds of potions you should sell next? Go ahead and try to cultivate some herbs then. Bioalchemical processing can infuse herbs with different effects and properties. Using different herbs in the brewing process will, in turn, alter the effects of the potion. There's a whole bunch of combinations to try. All right, cutie, why don't you get started? Seems like you've gotten the hang of the cultivation side of things. Ah, oh, I should probably mention, a knight from the logistics company has arrived. She'll be the one handling the provision of all future supplies. You should go have a chat with her in a little bit. And after that, it'll be your time to shine. Yeah, shouldn't it be our time to shine? You know, the three of us? What about your role in all this? My role? <laughs> Naturally, it was to ensure my cuties had all the business and alchemy knowledge they needed to succeed. Okay, I'll be rooting for you. Good luck! Ah, I might knew this would happen. Greetings, honorary knight. Greetings, Paimon. My name is Breda. I'm a knight from the logistics company. It's such an honor to meet the famous traveler and his loyal attendant. Wow, Paimon's fame is really spreading across the land! <laughs> um, one small correction though. Paimon's his companion, not his attendant. <sighs> My apologies. I guess I got a bit carried away after hearing all about your exploits. It's just like something out of a novel. You're practically legends at this point. I'm... I'm a bit jealous, actually. I'd love to wander the land in search of adventure like one of those knights you read about in stories. <sighs> Seems like a really fun life. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping at least. <laughs> anyway, we've got some prep work to wrap up, right? My orders from the acting grandmaster are to support your business in any way that I can. If there's anything you need, just let me know. You're in luck. I just got a new batch of provisions. Please, take a look and see if anything catches your eye.
Have a question for me, cutie? Well, if there's any...
Interesting to do.
Tea parties are a must for the well-mannered. If you'd like to learn the proper etiquette, I'd be happy to teach you. What's up? It's been a while. Oh, Beto and Yua! Wait, you two know each other? <laughs> well, we haven't known each other long, but we hit it off right away. Guess it was meant to be. I met Captain Beto at Dornman Port. She was here in Mondstadt to buy some supplies, and I offered to accompany her around the area. Wow, you were taking the initiative and making friends? Did I not hear that right? <clears throat> Given that the two of us just met, I wouldn't go so far as to call us friends just yet. I was just being... hospitable, as is expected of a knight. Huh? 
Oh, I thought we were getting along pretty well. You're telling me you were just being polite? Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I just thought that after my blunder earlier, you probably wouldn't want to be my friend. Come on, it was just a little misunderstanding, that's all. You're still beating yourself up about that? Honestly, I'd forgotten all about it. Misunderstanding? What happened? Well, a few days ago, after docking at Dornman Port, I thought I'd treat the crew to some time at the tavern to blow off some steam. While we were there, an argument broke out between a couple of drunk guys. Things looked like they were about to get physical, so I intervened to try and break it up. I tried talking to them, but they were in the mood for a fight, and my words fell on deaf ears. So I had to resort to, uh, a more hands-on way of getting them to calm down. Eula was patrolling the area while all this was going down, and when she walked in, oh, it wasn't a pretty sight. I should probably take it from here. Recently, we've intercepted a string of attempts to smuggle goods through Dornman Port, so we decided to step up our patrols in the area. On my rounds that day, I noticed a group of people I'd never seen before, and they were sailors. My suspicions were raised, so I asked our captain to show a valid entry permit for the port. Captain Beto said she didn't have the entry permit on her person, and told me to check with the port authorities myself. I insisted that she should accompany me there, and, well, you can see how things could get heated in a situation like that. Hey, you were, you were just doing your duty. It was my fault, really. I should have watched my tone, but I'd had a few too many, and... Anyway, it all worked out in the end. I took Eula back to my ship, showed her my documents, and that was that. Misunderstanding resolved. I felt bad, though, so I told her I'd treat her to a drink when we got back to the tavern. Once we got to talking, we really hit it off. We sat there chatting until the tavern was about to close. Captain Beto mentioned that she wanted to have a look around the city the next day. I was also planning to head back to headquarters to submit some paperwork, so we decided to go together. Ah, I meant to say earlier. Drop the captain and just call me Beto. There's no need for formalities between friends. Oh, yes, of course. <clears throat> Pardon me for being so formal. Anyway, as for why we're here, I heard about your shop when I got back to headquarters, and after discussing it with Beto, we decided to stop by and say hello. Oh, that's right. Plus, I'm curious to see what the deal is with these Mondstadt potions you've been brewing up. Eh, could do. Although, I don't have any health issues, and my ship's already stocked with everything I could need out on the ocean. <sighs> Let me think. Oh, do you have a potion that helps with getting to sleep? Are you having trouble sleeping, Beto? No, not me. The minute my head hits the pillow, it lights out till the next morning. It's just that, uh, I have this friend. She doesn't lack for anything, and she eats right and drinks right, but she just doesn't sleep well. I don't know if it's a case of affluenza, or if she just has too many things on her mind. Wait, this friend you're talking about, you must mean... Yep. She's no stranger to rare and precious treasures, but I'd wager that to her, the chance to relax and get a good night's sleep is rarer than any treasure in her collection. Alright, we'll get started on that order for you right away! Great, thanks for the help. making going. Hope you didn't run into too much trouble. Yeah. 
ocean making going? Perfect. Looks like my gift is all set. Is it time for your return journey then? If you're heading back to Dornman Port, I'd be happy to accompany you. Yeah, I think I've gotten my fill of sightseeing, so it's probably time I headed back. Don't want to keep my crew waiting. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you some other time. Oh, and good luck with your business! On behalf of the Reconnaissance Company, I'd like to express my gratitude to you as well.
Fontaine Fashion Week? Ooh, why don't we go check out some of the shops? Maybe we can pick up some cool new clothes. Is... is this really okay? I told you I could do it using the leftover funds from the original deposit. Don't tell me you're afraid that I cheaped out on the dress. No, not at all. I have only the fullest faith in your work, Miss Chiori. I'm just in shock, that's all. It's always been my dream to wear a Chioria boutique dress for my wedding. I really thought the chance had passed me by. Wait, isn't that Chiori? She's actually at her shop today? Oh, you've got a point there. Well, once she's done with her customer, we can go and ask her. I'm a woman of my word. If I say I can do something, then it'll be done. The first rule of business is to always keep your promises. Now, remember to not fold the gown, or store it under direct sunlight. I'd recommend only taking it out on the day of the wedding. But from the look on your face, I can tell that may be a little difficult for you. Oh, I'll try my best. <laughs> Once he sees me in this, his jaw is gonna drop straight to the floor. Is that really so shocking? It is mine, after all. Anything you're looking for today? A custom design, or perhaps some ready-to-wear outfits for kids? Hey, Paimon's not a kid! Oh, that. Well, if news of the event has reached your ears, I suppose the Fontaine Apparel Association's advertising efforts have paid off. Are there any fun and popular activities that we can take part in? Ugh, fashion week isn't what I'd call fun. But it certainly always attracts a crowd. It's a fashion extravaganza that only takes place once a year, after all. Will you be showing off some of your designs, too? Of course. All designers at the Court of Fontaine use the week to advertise their brand. If you're lucky, you could even land a large amount of orders as soon as the main show ends. Come to think of it, it was also at a previous fashion week that our label first took off. Hmm, aren't you pretty much an established name now? People will still buy your clothes even if you don't participate this year, right? Yeah, that's not quite how it works. While many people buy clothes for fit and style, the fashion industry also strongly values a label's artistic vision and creative direction. Why would anyone patronize a label that hasn't even bothered to put out any new designs for the year? In the end, fashion is just a representation of the spirit of the times. People support your brand because they support the vision it represents. Huh. 
Okay, so maybe fashion's more complicated than Paimon thought. <laughs> uh, all that complicated stuff aside, you're saying we'll be able to see new Chioria designs at the show? Absolutely. The designs have already been finalized. I'm just waiting for the fabrics to arrive. Ooh, are you using materials you can't get in Fontaine? Well, I still have a certain partiality to Inazuma-made fabrics. The textures are pleasant to the touch, and their familiarity gives me a sense of security. Oh, Paimon gets it! It's that feeling of home! Ugh, something like that, yes. We're a long way from Inazuma, though. Aren't you concerned that your shipment might get lost or stolen along the way? No need to worry. I've already taken steps to ensure that it'll arrive safely. I've entrusted the job to Komani Express's most reliable courier. Excuse me! Coming through! Coming through! Jury, your... your shipment's here. I know it's quite late, so I'm... Oh, really... really sorry. Deep breaths, Kirara. Then start again. Oh, so Kirara's the courier you were talking about! Oh, hey, Traveler and Paimon! Fancy seeing you here in Fontaine. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, maybe next time. Uh, considering how late this delivery is, I'm not sure this is the time to play cards. Plus, I know this shipment is really important to Chiori, so I should probably make sure everything's in order. Wait a second. This is the second time that you've seen me flub a delivery job now, isn't it? Oh, you somehow always happen to catch me off my game, huh? So, what was the holdup? Sailing delays? Bad weather? Huh? No, nothing like that. I just ran into a bit of trouble, that's all. Bandits, then? Or treasure hoarders? Hmm. <sighs> a few run-ins on the road aren't usually enough to give you any trouble. Uh, well, I didn't run into anyone, exactly. I just got a little lost. Keeping you honest as always, I see. Uh, all right, all right. I was stopped by a group of bandits as soon as I entered Fontaine. They were a little different from the ones I usually run into. I could hear them mumbling about Komunia Express. It was obvious they were looking for someone with two tails. So it was a targeted hit? Uh, I got the sense that they were actually targeting Chiori's goods. My fabric shipment? Yeah, they said that I could go as long as I left the goods with them. Otherwise, they'd stuff me into my delivery box and toss me into the sea to drown. Oh, are you okay, Kimura? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm still a yokai after all. I turned them over to the guards. It just took me a while to round them all up. Well, it's not completely out of the ordinary for one of your deliveries to get intercepted. But it still doesn't make sense how you knew it was my goods they were after. You've got other deliveries to make in Fontaine, don't you? Is there something else that you're keeping from me? Huh? Um... Well... <sighs> Perhaps I need to reconsider how many stars to give you in my review. Uh... You always know how to get me, Chiori. Alright, I'll talk, I'll talk. <clears throat> so, I kinda wanted to know why anyone would order a hit on me, so I spent a bit of time investigating. One of the bandits had a loose tongue, which saved me some time. He said that a certain person had commissioned them to intercept Chioria Boutique's delivery. And who might this person be? Uh, Chiori, why don't we just... Let this one go. I mean, I didn't really get injured, and you've still got Fashion Week to worry about. I appreciate your kindness, Kirara, but if I don't teach this person a lesson, I doubt they'll stop here. Anyone that dares to mess with one of my friends deserves a stern talking to, and then some. All right. The guy said that the commissioner was someone by the name of Uter. Uter? No, that name rings a bell. Wouldn't you say, Kirara? Well, that's exactly why I didn't want to bring it up to you. So you both know this Uter guy? Through Chiori's complaints about him, sure. 
He's a fellow fashion designer who's made it his goal in life to make hers as miserable as possible. Oh, so he's like a business rival. A rival is what you call someone who fights you fair and square. Uter, however, just has it out for me as a designer. He's publicly disparaged my design choices, my use of materials. <laughs> He's practically tried every trick in the book to ruin my good name. I've already warned him before to compete with me fair and square, but I guess he prefers playing dirty. Well, I'm more than happy to oblige. Wait, Shuri, where are you going? To teach someone a lesson. You must be tired after your long journey. Why don't you rest in my shop for a little while before heading back? Chiori! Wait! And she's gone. Oh no. What should we do? You seem concerned. Should we be worried about Chiori? Well, she's always been the type of person to face things head on. But with her fiery temper, I'm just worried whatever she's about to do will feel negative publicity about her right before the start of Fashion Week. Traveler, Paimon, could you go after her and check out the situation for me? As a formal employee of Komania Express, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to get involved. Yeah, we'll take good care of Chiori. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, I'm more worried about that Uter guy's safety. Anyway, please look after Chiori for me. Any chance you're on the clock, officer? Nothing good ever comes out of you addressing me like that. Oh? And I see the Traveler and Paimon are here too. Chevras! We meet again! Well, things have been fine on my end. We were able to bring in a large number of recruits thanks to that film we made. I suppose the trade-off is that I'm now constantly getting stopped for autographs while out on patrol. Not ideal, if you ask me. You were one of the leading roles, after all! So, did something happen? Indeed it did. I'll need you to come with me. <laughs> I only ever hear that phrase from you. Usually I'm the one asking people to do that. Well, are you coming? Not before I know what you're planning. Have I ever made a bad call? The better question is... Have you ever made one that didn't violate proper procedure? <sighs> okay. A man hired a group of bandits to mug my friend. I'm about to go teach him a lesson. Are you sure this is something you should be telling the captain of the special patrol? It's getting hard to tell whether you're here to report a case or turn yourself in for one. Neither. I'm requesting personal supervision from said captain, so I don't do anything too out of line. Are you planning to? Not if I can help it. <sighs> All right. Where is this person? Follow me. Just promise you'll start trying to keep yourself out of trouble. Well, when trouble stops coming my way, I'll be sure to get on that. This should be the place. You all wait here. I'll go have a... chat with him. You know, Chevras, Paimon gets the sense that you two are actually pretty close. It's just as Chiori said. We got to know each other pretty well in our lines of work. You could call it a you-scratch-my-back-and-I'll-scratch-yours sort of situation. Does Chiori often need your help? Uh, I'd say it's mutual. The Special Patrol needs her help quite often as well. 
We've got tough problems of our own. Getting people to talk, for example. The uniform, the musket, they're intimidating. Most people clam up the minute they see us. Lips sealed so tight, getting them to talk almost feels like trying to break into the fortress of Maripede. But put them in a clothing boutique, and they suddenly start gushing faster than the waters at the Fountain of Lucene. Oh, is it because they're trying to show off or something? Yep. People are vain creatures. They can't help but want to talk up new developments in their lives or show off how much they know about other people. And nothing brings out that sort of vanity quite like fashion. As a result, Shiori often picks up on all kinds of information in her shop. Most of her customers are members of the upper class, which means they're pretty much up to the gills in wealth and intel. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Huh, Paimon gets it now? Exactly. I'm also here to ensure Chiori's safety. Those who make trouble for her also tend to be rich and powerful. And in some very rare cases, I'm forced to protect other people from Chiori herself. <sighs> so, who got on her case this time? It's been a while since I last saw her that angry. Oh, so this is what happened! Huh? Uter, you say? You've heard of him? Yep. He's made trouble for Chiori several times already. He's fond of pretty much every dirty trick in the book. I heard that even the Maison Guardianage issued him a warning due to his behavior. So he's back at it, huh? His funeral, I guess. Whoa, what's this about a funeral all of a sudden? I just meant that Uter's done for. Now bring it in, you two. Get right up close. Uh, sure, but why? Because this is probably going to turn into one of those very rare cases I just talked about. What are you doing? Stay away from me! Has anyone ever taught you the definition of stupidity? Huh? Stupidity is doing the same meaningless thing over and over again. It appears you've forgotten what I told you before. So, allow me to refresh your memory. Lay off the dirty tricks! <clears throat> oh, and if you dare lay your hands on my friend again, you can expect a far less pleasant landing next time. Ahem, <clears throat> Chiori? <laughs> <clears throat> officer, an assault's in progress! Please, officer, you've got to do something! Of course. I'll do my utmost to investigate the situation. Unfortunately, I was chatting with this traveler and seemed to have missed what happened. Not to worry, though. If you'd allow me to search the scene, I'm sure I'll be able to collect some useful evidence. You don't mind, do you? There's nothing in there that would implicate you in any illegal activity, I would hope. I... Gah, forget it. It wasn't that big of a deal. Ms. Chiori, I must also ask you to refrain from engaging in such disorderly conduct in the future. Especially out in the open like this. Huh. <sighs> Apologies, officer. I guess you could say I'm just used to tossing out any trash I come across on the street. You... Is there anything else either of you have to say for yourselves? That's all from me. I sincerely hope that today's events will never happen again. We'll see about that. You're too kind. Now's not the time to be accepting compliments. What happened to not doing anything too out of line? Oh, not if I could help it, is what I said. And I think I kept that. I started with a verbal warning, but he displayed neither shame nor remorse. If anything, he kept running his mouth with insults and threats. 
Insults and threats so bad that he deserved to be tossed out like a sack of trash? Believe it or not, they were that bad. He deserved to get knocked down a peg. It's the only way to get him to stop. You could have reported him to the guards. Oh, I will. But it'll take some time for them to gather evidence. And he denied that he ever had anything to do with those bandits. I don't want anything else to happen during Fontaine Fashion Week. On top of that, if Kirara is going to continue delivering goods for me, the least I can do is guarantee her safety. <sighs> oh, that reminds me. There is another favor I'd like to ask of you today. Hmm, what a shame. I believe you've already used up your favor quota for the day. Have I? Well, it's a good thing I was planning on taking an advance on tomorrow's quota then. Don't you think you're maxed out on advances already? I always pay you back in information, don't I? It's just like you said. You scratch my back, and I scratch yours. time oh please tell me nothing bad happened there's nothing to worry about all you need to know is that you'll never have to worry about someone in fontaine messing with your deliveries again uh, sorry chiori i didn't mean to cause you so much trouble what are you talking about you didn't do anything wrong those greedy bandits are to blame along with a certain someone who doesn't know when to lay off the petty tricks the next time you need to leave the city, call the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. They'll escort you half of the way, and the Spina di Rasula can take the second half. With that sort of escort, the next time you make a delivery, those treasure hoarders won't go anywhere near your goods. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's to offer to carry them for you. <laughs> uh, good one, Chiori. I'm being serious. You know me. If I bring something up, you can assume it's already a done deal. You're going back to Inazuma tomorrow, right? Wait, you don't mean... I've already spoken to the captain of the special patrol. As discussed, the patrol's going to take a small detour during their daily training tomorrow. As for Navia, I'll give her a heads up in a bit. There's really no need. I'm just a simple courier. I don't need to be surrounded by a bunch of armed guards. Or ones with sunglasses, for that matter. Don't you think this is a bit much? Well, you certainly shouldn't count on such a procession for every trip you make to Fontaine. It's just a one-off thing. For my own peace of mind. It'll also show those guys what'll happen to those who dare to mess with my friends. Well, if you think it's a good idea, Traveler, then... I guess it's fine. Well, with the bad guys out of the way and your goods safely delivered, everything should be good to go for Fontaine Fashion Week, right? I believe so. I'll try to churn out a few more outfits over the next few days. I've heard a lot of suppliers will be participating this year. Paimon's gonna take a guess and say if suppliers are super important? But of course. They supply us designers with funding, equipment, factory access. You have to work with them if you want to become a truly renowned fashion house. That's also why this year's Fashion Week is so important to me. But isn't your brand already really famous, Chiori? Your clothes are so pretty and so nice to wear. I can't help but brag about them to my customers whenever I get the chance. Even so, I would imagine there are still people who've never heard of the Chioria brand, yes? Well... I mean, with the amount of places that I deliver to... It's only natural that some people from other nations haven't heard of it. Then it's still not famous enough. My goal is to make the Chioria brand renowned throughout all of Tavat. All of it? Your business would have to get pretty huge then. Wait, would that mean I could just go to any Chioria branch on the continent to get my clothes fixed? 
it has been pretty inconvenient having to come to Fontaine every time I need to get them patched up. Alternatively, of course, you could just be a bit more careful with them. They're already about as durable as I can make them. <laughs> okay, I'll admit, they do get snagged on branches pretty often, but I can't help it. It's hard to be careful about that sort of thing when you're trying to take a nice nap in a tree. Well, if that's your dream, Chiori, then we should do our best to make it a reality! Is there anything we can do to help out with Fashion Week? Hmm... I'm sure I could think of something. Oh, what is it? What is it? Why don't you come to my shop tomorrow and model for me? Simply put, you'll serve as my living mannequins. Oh, so we get to try on some of your clothes? Got it! Seeing them off the rack will also give me the chance to make some small adjustments to the stitching and the silhouette of the designs. Sounds easy enough! Most of the clothes you see during Fashion Week are meant to showcase the designer's vision. They're not exactly suitable for ready-to-wear use. If you like them, though, feel free to visit the boutique and see if anything catches your eye. I'll even give you a special discount. curious about all this design stuff. Then we have a deal. You'll model some formal wear, Traveler. And... I don't know. Haimon here will show off some kids' designs. I'll see you both tomorrow, then. Yep, sounds good. Wait. Kids' clothes? Haimon told you already she's not a little kid! <laughs> Speaking of clothes, do yours happen to need any mending right now, Kirara? <laughs> uh, well, since you asked, Chiori, there's this part around my waist. Oh, need a bit of letting out around the middle. No! It's a tear. Those bad guys did it. <laughs> You're here early. I haven't even opened the shop yet. Wait, has Kirara left already? Yep, with the special patrol. Bright and early. Did everything go alright on the road? I believe so. The patrol makes for quite the entourage. The way they marched forward with Kirara in the center, you'd think she was some sort of VIP. For the second leg, the Spina also came with a pretty large group, led by Navia herself. They took care to clear the path beforehand as well. Kirara won't so much as step on a single stray rock on her journey. I even heard that Navia decided out of the blue to make a batch of macarons as a going away gift for Kirara. An excellent souvenir to remember Fontaine by, I'd say. Sounds like Navia really got into it! My thoughts exactly. She even lamented the fact that she didn't have time to prepare something even fancier. I'm pretty sure she can't wait for another escort opportunity to come her way. You know, now that you mention Navia, Paimon thinks the two of you are actually pretty similar. You say what you mean, and when you have an idea, you really hit the ground running! I suppose that's why we're such good friends. Navia has a certain resilience about her. It's part of who she is. No matter what comes her way, she never bows down in the face of adversity. That sort of determination and courage is something I really admire. That same spirit is the true vision of my brand. When she first mentioned commissioning an outfit from my boutique, well, I'm sure you can imagine my excitement. It's like finding the perfect brand ambassador, huh? Indeed. Customers pay attention not just to the clothes, but also to the figures in society who wear said clothes. People like to copy the styles of those they look up to. Huh. And here Paimon thought all that mattered was for the clothes to look cute. Fashion is about more than just looks, my dear. Especially if you've got your sights set on a market the size of Tavat. Hmm. Well, would you look at the time? Oh yeah! Come on, let's get down to business! We're here to model! 
Seattle. Indeed. Give me a moment while I go retrieve some fabrics and sample outfits. Why don't you help me set up the shop displays in the meantime? Set them up? Uh, how exactly? Just carefully organize the ready-to-wear clothes with an eye toward their types and styles. This way, we can guarantee that the customers will see something different every day. Whoa, there sure is a lot that goes into running a store. Well then, I'll leave the displays to you. Not bad. You might just have an eye for design. Anyway, let's move on to the real task at hand. Over here, stand still. I'll take your measurements first. Um, excuse me, Miss Chiori. Oh, good morning, Leanne. How have you been recently? Uh, not too bad. Your gown will be ready next week, so there's no need to worry about missing the ball. Or did you come here today because you'd like to make a new request, perhaps? Oh, no. Nothing like that, Miss Chiori. To be honest, I came here today to cancel my order for that gown. Uh, <laughs> cancel your order? Uh, but you can keep the deposit, of course. I know you can't return any materials you've already used. Don't worry about the materials. I'm more concerned about you. Did something happen, Leanne? Have your plans changed? Um... It's alright. I'm not trying to make things difficult for you. I'll take note of the cancellation. Thank you. I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it. Just let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Was she acting a bit strange just now? Wonder why she wouldn't tell us why she was canceling her order. It's not a big deal. These things happen every once in a while. A family emergency, an important payday falling through, a lover's quarrel, no one to take you to the ball. I've pretty much heard it all. Judging from the look on her face, something's keeping her from revealing the truth to us. It's best not to pry. Well, guess this means you'll have more time to work on Fashion Week, right? That's true. Come, let's pick up where we left off. Is Miss Chiori in? I am. How can I help you? Um, I'd like to return this item. Oh, could I ask why? It's just, dumb, um, not to my liking. You said I could get a refund if I wasn't satisfied, so that's why I'm here. Is there something about it that didn't meet your expectations? Are the sleeves too short, or is the color too dark? I can always make those adjustments for you. No, oh, no need. You don't have to concern yourself with that. I'd just like that refund, please. And I'd be happy to process that for you. If you could just tell me the cause of your dissatisfaction. Is Kiori here? I'd like to return my outfit. Is there some sort of new calamity coming that I haven't heard about? Another flood? Or an apocalypse, maybe? What does the prophecy say this time? You'll be spared if you get rid of all your clothes? Surely the entire population of Fontaine didn't convene and pick this one day to come and return my clothes. What is going on? <sighs> what kind of rags are you trying to sell us, huh? The way I see it, this shop is nothing more than a black market front run by a bunch of dirty criminals. Please calm down, sir. Oh, uh, what is he talking about? Haven't you heard? Chioria Boutique has been exposed for having close ties with criminals. It's all over the papers. And just who is it that dares to throw that accusation around? Well, you tell us. The fabrics you've got here. 
They're all sourced from underground factories, aren't they? I've been transparent about my materials from the very beginning. I've already proved there's nothing wrong with them. If a little hearsay and baseless slander are enough to convince you, then by all means, go ahead and hand over your garments right now. Spare yourself from that flood of yours. Or have you not been convinced of that one just yet? You... Eroth! Miss Tiori? Go outside and help these customers with their return requests. There's no need to ask them why. We'll refund them at the purchase price. Uh, alright. And once you're done, put up the sign that says we're closed for the day. Got it. Hmm. Chiori. They couldn't be more fabricated if you tried. No need to worry about them. I'm sure they'll go away on their own in a few days. The real goal here is to divert my attention away from Fashion Week. The best response right now is to tune it out and focus on finalizing my designs. If you say so, but Paimon still can't help but worry. The best way to respond to public skepticism is to let your work speak for itself. There will be no doubt about the quality of my work once my new designs are released. The public just has to see it for themselves. Miss Yuri, bad news! Oh, for the love of... Can a woman not get a moment of pace to do her work? Go on. What's the matter now? It's our accessories supplier. They just sent word that they'll no longer be able to supply us during Fashion Week. What? Uh, no accessories? Not even the ones we pre-ordered? Yes, that's what their messenger said. And what about the models we asked them to book for us? I think they'll probably pull out as well. Even the suppliers believe those nasty rumors? <sighs> Is the messenger still here? No, they've already left. So, no accessories means no brooches, no bow ties, things like that? Not just that. It means no gems, ribbons, gold thread, all the elements that lend life and soul to my designs. But if you take those away, does that mean you won't be able to make your designs at all? Aloth, you stay and watch the shop. I'll go talk to the supplier myself. Yeah, and we can vouch for you too. We'll make sure your supplier knows there's nothing wrong with your clothes. Thank you. In that case, please come with me. I know Miss Tiori has put a lot of work into making Fashion Week a success. I hope you can talk things through with the supplier. I wouldn't do anything to one of my business partners, especially when a reasonable conversation should suffice. Who is it? Venger, it's Chiori. <sighs> We've worked together all these years. The least you could do is allow me a face-to-face -face conversation. <laughs> Straightforward as always, I see. You know, there are certain 
Conventions people usually follow if they want to seek someone's company. Sending a messenger, for example. And when has following convention ever gotten me anywhere? Why hire a messenger when I can just explain things in person? Hmm. Have you read the papers today? I don't like to waste my time on baseless lies and speculation. Maybe that's something you should consider as well. You're right. I only subscribe to the Steambird. And most days, I never even read the others. So, these rumors. The Steambird was the one that published them? No, not at all. They were in some second-rate fashion tabloids. Well then, there you go. Those sort of headlines become old news faster than you can read them. Surely a bit of tabloid drama isn't worth cutting off my supply. <sighs> you would think that. But this time is different. Someone paid off the tabloids to publish the same article at once. They even went so far as to leave a copy in front of every house. That's how I first learned of the rumors. Every house? That means someone must have been planning this for a very long time. It seems your rival really pulled out all the stops this time, Shiori. The article was even published alongside a photo of you. What sort of photo? Uh... A photo of you beating up someone on the street yesterday. Yesterday? Wait, that means... Ugh, Uchair again. Here, I've got a copy. See for yourselves.
behind the scenes, the true Chioria boutique takes shape. Not a fashion house, but a house of lies. Relying on its close ties to the criminal underworld, the Chioria brand employs illegal competitive tactics to come out on top, giving hope to the evildoers among us that wrongdoing can still prevail, provided you conceal it under the guise of fashion and beauty. <sighs> I don't know what happened, and I don't want to comment on things that I didn't see with my own eyes. Still, that photo shows you to be the clear aggressor. Yeah, he was the one who started it, that little... I appreciate you standing up for me, Paimon, but it can't be helped now. That's right. The court of public opinion has already made up its mind. Still, I've got to give your rival high marks for effort. They even dug up the fact that my father once served time in the fortress of Meripede. But that was so long ago. In the world of fashion, your past is like a piece of clothing stained with mud. Once tainted, it can never be washed clean. They claim that most of your clientele are criminals and that those who buy your clothes are just like you. People who silence all dissent with violence. The absurdity. I don't even know which part to laugh at the most. Well, it's no laughing matter. Maybe your clientele are criminals. Maybe they're not. There's even the possibility that they're just people who happen to commit crimes after buying your clothes. But with the way this article combines fact with rumor, trying to determine the truth is practically an exercise of futility. It's not something people are just going to forget about in a day or two. Especially when they've found several people to back up their claims. Venger, are you sure you won't reconsider? If we go through with the show together, we can defeat them fair and square. <laughs> if I were younger, I might have said yes. But I'm no longer that brave young man with nothing to lose. I've got the family business to consider now. I'd be perfectly happy to work with you again after this, but my daughter is manning the store during Fashion Week, and I don't want her implicated in all of this. She doesn't deserve to be swarmed by all that negative publicity. I... understand. Let me offer you a piece of advice, Chiori. For old time's sake. Let this Fashion Week go. There's always next year. You just need to wait for all of this to blow over. You're free to wait things out, Venger. I'll make my own choices. <laughs> Have you ever thought maybe that attitude of yours is what's gotten you into all this trouble? Have you ever thought maybe this attitude of mine is precisely what paved the way for my success? Well, fair enough. Then I suppose all there's left to say is... Best of luck. As for the models... <sighs> None of them wanted to be implicated in all of this, either. Understood. Take care. <sighs> so, um... What should we do now? Without the accessories, I can no longer use my old designs. How could they do this? They're making things up! The boutique doesn't have anything to do with violent criminals! This is just a bunch of lies? Public opinion has never been about what's true and what's not. It's about echoing the loudest voice in the room. <sighs> I should have seen it from the beginning. Uter knows me too well. Everything that happened yesterday was just a trap. Well, guess all we can do is just head back for now. Traveler! Paimon! Charlotte, what are you doing here? Looking for you, of course. Did you see those fashion tabloids this morning? You mean that sorry excuse for an article? Oh, just thinking about it makes Paimon's blood boil. You too, huh? Whoever wrote that article must have known the Steambird would never print something so defamatory. Unfortunately, not all papers in Fontaine share our same sense of journalistic integrity. Miss Chiori doesn't deserve to suffer all this baseless slander. 
I was just about to find some people to interview so that I can write an article to refute all those claims. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's people who misrepresent and distort the facts. That's great! With your help, we might be able to get some people back on our side! It's my pleasure. I've met Miss Chiori several times. I know she's not the kind of person that article makes her out to be. She was the one who made the hat and tie for my camera, Monsieur Verite. Speaking of Miss Chiori, do you know where she went? Alof told me you were all together. Uh, she was just here. Uh, maybe she went over there? Let's go check! Ask me, I think Chioria Boutique is done for. I mean, what did they expect? Engaging with criminals behind their customers' backs. They kept up a solid front, though. I've even bought from them before. Really? How was it? The owner was plenty fierce, that's for sure. Makes sense if she regularly deals with criminals, I guess. I've got the chills just thinking about it. Oh no, we've lost her. <sighs> Did you hear what all those people were saying? Mm, Paimon can't believe they bought all that nonsense. Miss Chiori doesn't often appear in public or give a lot of interviews, so the general public hasn't had a chance to really get to know her. It's also true that her way of dealing with things can be a little... extreme sometimes. It's easy to use that to mislead people who don't know anything else about her. Oh, this is all Uter's fault! Paimon would pick him up and throw him across the room too if she could! Wait a second... You don't think Chiori might have gone looking for him, do you? You know, so she can, uh, finish what she started? <laughs> that would only make the situation worse for her. I'm sure Miss Giori knows that too. You've got a point. Let's just return to the boutique and see if she's there then. This is Miss Letitia. She's also here to see Miss Chiori. Oh, you were the one who came to collect the wedding dress yesterday, right? Wait, please don't say you're returning that dress too. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I'm just here to thank her. In fact, if there's anything I can do to help her out, I'd be more than willing. Ah, so you've come across that article as well. Yeah, you probably don't know this, but after I got engaged, I didn't think I'd be able to wear a Chioria dress on my wedding day. Uh, why? My fiancé owns a small business. It doesn't bring in a lot of Mora, but we get by. After he proposed, he took me to Chioria Boutique, and we put down a custom order for a dress. He probably noticed how often I talked about Miss Chiori's clothes, and how pretty they were. Being able to wear one of her dresses to my wedding has always been my dream. And then? And then, something happened to the business. And we ran into major Mora problems. We were able to scrounge up enough to pay off our debts, but... It left us without the funds to pay for the dress. But didn't Chiori say she was able to make the dress from what was left of the original deposit? 
Yes. When I came to cancel the order, she asked if something happened, and I told her everything. She heard me out, and then told me not to worry. She assured me that the deposit I paid would be enough for the dress, and that... and that she'd be able to finish making it in time as well. She promised that I'd be able to wear a Chihoria dress on my wedding day. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? I've always known Miss Chiori to be a woman of her word. It is good. It's just... After I went home yesterday, I couldn't help but take out the dress and try it on. My fiancé happened to walk into the room and... And when he saw me, he froze on the spot. Ah, what a shame. He's not supposed to see it until the wedding day. Well, see, that wasn't actually the issue. He's seen a lot of wedding dresses in his time doing business. So as soon as he saw it, he knew for sure that it must have cost far more than what we paid. Huh? So wait, that means... Yeah. Miss Chihori covered all the costs and held nothing back. The fabric, accessories, beading, construction... It was all of the highest quality. Oh. Miss Letitia... I'd really like to use your story for a piece I'm writing about the boutique. Would you mind going on the record? Huh? Well, if it would help Miss Chiori out, I wouldn't mind at all. I think it'd go a long way. Your real experience is more powerful than all those lies combined. Hey, Alof! Has Chiori come back here since we left? Huh? I thought you were all together. Well, we were. Um... If she didn't come back here, then do you know of any other places she could have gone? Um... Oh! I remember now. There's this one cliff by the sea. Miss Chiori would always go there whenever she was upset. In that case, why don't we split up? I'll continue interviewing Miss Letitia, and you two can go look for Miss Chiori. Alright, sounds good. Let's go! So, in your opinion, what is Miss Chiori like as a person? Let's see. Well, she's certainly not afraid to say what she means, but she always looks out for her customers however she can. Miss Chiori isn't the sort to just give up. She probably just needs a place where she can think in peace. You know where I... Uh... I love told you, didn't she? She did. We were just looking for you at the shop and Letitia was there. She wanted to thank you for the dress. So, you see? You don't have to be sad. We'll figure out how to get through this together. Uh, I'm not upset. I just wanted to get some fresh air. Wanna sit here with me? The view's quite stunning. Don't worry. I'll catch you if you fall. Alright, don't mind if we do! Well, how does it feel? This place is pretty great! Right? It's quiet and open. And far from the relentless critique from fashion commentators in the media. <sighs> it's just you and the beautiful scenery. Yeah, it's important to take yourself out of that kind of stressful environment every once in a while. <laughs> I didn't grow up in a very strict family. My parents would joke that I grew up to be so assertive because they spoiled me as a child. 
I would get together with the other children to climb trees and explore caves. One time, I even climbed over the walls of the Kamisato estate. One of the servants had to physically remove me. Whoa, Paimon would have never imagined that! But even as rambunctious as I was, when it came to needlework, I was as quiet and focused as could be. It was as if I discovered a whole new world within those vibrant, dazzling fabrics. You know the feeling? Uh, sorta. My parents noticed, and they sent me to study under a famous Inazuman tailor. It wasn't long before I had driven away pretty much every master tailor on the archipelago. You could say I really tried their patience. You were that misbehaved? I wasn't misbehaved, exactly. I just... often had strange ideas when it came to fashion. Ones that weren't in line with traditional ways of doing things. On top of that, ugh, I hated the idea of groveling and making outfits for every arrogant big shot expecting me to be at their beck and call. Anyway, a few incidents later, I soon found myself without a master. Worse, not one shop was willing to hire me. Not even to do grunt work. No wonder you left Inazuma. I was angry and frustrated. So, before I left, I swore to all those masters that my brand would one day become renowned all over to that. Well, that's a great dream to strive towards. After that, I came all the way to the Court of Fontaine, a city often referred to as the capital of arts and fashion. I had a lot of fun starting out. Sure, I was living in a small cramped room, but I was finally free to make whatever I wanted. I had a far more naive view of fashion back then. As long as something was pretty, it would become popular, right? A simple concept, surely. Of course, as I spent more and more time in the industry, I learned nothing was ever that simple. Least of all, fashion. Oh, you mean Letitia? Yeah, she did mention that dream. I'll be honest with you. That's the first time I ever heard something like that from one of my customers. Who would have thought? Even as I continue to pursue my dream, my work has also become someone else's. <sighs> Alright, that's enough sightseeing for one day. Time to come up with a way out of this mess. Ooh, looks like you've got your game face back! Back? It was never gone to begin with. I did say I wasn't upset, didn't I? Paimon thinks we should look for evidence that Uter wrote that article, and that he hired those treasure hoarders to attack Kirara. Charlotte's already working on an article to address all those nasty rumors so we can publish all our findings in the Steambird once we're done. I don't like duking it out in the press. <sighs> but if Charlotte's thrown her hat in the ring, I won't stop her either. I know where Uter's clothing factory is located. It might be a good place to start looking for some evidence. Sounds good! We'll come with! As for Fashion Week, well, there's always next year, right? So there's no need to be too upset. Huh? When did this become an either-or situation? Find incriminating evidence or participate in Fashion Week. <laughs> I'm doing both. Uh, but your accessories! Didn't you say your designs were unusable without them? Well, it's true that I haven't quite figured out what to do about that, but... To tell you the truth, even here in Fontaine, every time I see the sea, I can't help but remember Inazuma and the vow I made in front of those masters. Thinking about all that, I just... can't bear to take even one step back. <sighs> the sea... Hmm? What did you just say, Chiori? The sea. Seashells, coral. <laughs> I've got it. Uh, got what? Come, let's take a dip, shall we? Uh, Chiori! Wait, hold up!
you just jump into the sea all of a sudden? Paimon, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the sea? Uh, um, a lumi twelve? Or a pearl, maybe? Oh, coral's pretty, too. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You want to use things like that as the accessories for your designs! Well, now that you hit the nail on the head, help me grab some, would you? Leave it to us! Everything looks great. I've also collected a pretty big batch, so we should have enough. Great! So are we gonna head back now and make some new designs? Yes, but don't forget. We've got more than just the designs to worry about when we get back. Okay, we've got the materials for the accessories. Next... We'll need to use what we have on hand to create some new outfits. You mean we have to start from scratch? Will there be enough time? I should be able to make it. If I skip out on sleep. Oh no, skipping out on sleep is not the answer. Wait, how come this conversation is giving Paimon major deja vu? Well, anyway, sleep is important. You're not gonna convince Paimon otherwise. <laughs> well, I can't argue with you there. One thing's for sure, though. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it work. <laughs> All this grit and determination. It reminds me of the first fashion week I ever participated in. What else can we help with? Uh, let me see. I suppose all there's left to do is... tear up all the outfits currently on display. You got it! Uh, wait, what did you just say? You heard me. Tear them all up. When I went to that first fashion week, I had no savings to speak of. Just a few dozen yards of fabric in a dream. I had to make something work, so... I tore up all the clothes that I brought with me from Inazuma, and I used the scraps to make my entries for the show. I used the larger pieces for the base fabric, and the smaller pieces for accessories. If it worked back then, why not now? We can also repurpose some of the ready-to-use accessories in the shop as well. But you worked so hard on all these outfits! I know. That's why I refuse to let it all go to waste. I'm not going to let them win. Even if it takes everything I've ever made and more. Um, okay, then... Here goes nothing. No need to be nervous. I won't hold it against you. Of course, if anyone dared to tear up one of my dresses in front of me on a normal day, I'd probably toss them into the sewer. Just this once, though. I think I can make an exception. Go ahead and tear them up. Think of it as a good way to vent your emotions. Good job. That should do it. Chiori, are you alright? Sorry for taking so long. I got caught up and... Whoa. What happened to your shop? Who did this? Those monsters. Slandering you in the papers wasn't enough for them, was it? They even sent people to wreck your shop. Give me their names. Since they're all too eager to tear up other people's clothes, I think it's about time the Spina di Rosula returned the favor. Um... 
maybe you should calm down a bit first, cause you see, uh... Uh, huh? Ugh, what is this, a soap opera? I was the one who asked the traveler to tear up the outfits. We need all the fabric and accessories we can get. Oh, <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> I guess I got a bit ahead of myself just now. <laughs> Back to what you were doing, everyone. You can all just pretend like I didn't say anything. Navia sure is scary when she's angry. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a false accusation. No one's gonna orchestrate some conspiracy to take down one of my friends and get away with it. You and Chiori are really close. Of course. Everyone knows that Chiori makes the most gorgeous outfits in town. All of the Spina di Rosula's formal wear is custom-tailored here. Now, if only you'd give me the contract for your uniforms as well. <laughs> as if you'd enjoy designing something as boring and formulaic as a uniform. That's why I didn't ask you in the first place, silly. Plus, with how much your intel has helped us out in the past, to the Spina, you're more of an intelligence agency than a fashion boutique. If I had it my way, it would be the other way around. Anyway, we both know why I'm here. Tell me, how can the Spina be of service to you? If it's not too much trouble, can I borrow some skilled hands to help with some simple sewing work? I'll need all the help I can get if I'm going to finish these outfits over the next few days. Oh, no problem. I've got a few of those guys all ready to go. I just knew you wouldn't be intimidated into withdrawing from this year's show. When are you going to get started? I can help with sewing, too. Actually, there's something else I'd like to ask of you. Ask away. I'm all ears. Oh, and Traveler and Paimon, could you help me pass word to Linny and Lynette? I'll need their help as well. I'm done with my interview. Has Miss Chiori made it back yet? Go! Oh! What happened to the boutique? Who did this? Give me names. I'll make sure every last one lands a full feature on the front page of the Steambird tomorrow. Not this again. What should we do about these clothes everywhere? Need any help? Sort them by the type of fabric first, and then by color. Oh, and don't forget to remove any accessories and put them to the side. That sounds pretty straightforward. I'll help too! later and you'd have missed us. We read the article in the papers. We were just about to go find Miss Chiori. She helped design a number of our costumes in the past and even sponsored one of our performances. The time has come, it seems, for us to return the favor. Oh, perfect! She was the one who sent us! In that case, I assume that there's something we can do to help. Just say the word and we'll take care of it. Okay, so it's like this. Is that all we'll need to do? Should be a piece of cake for the two of us. I'm glad to hear it! Well then, guess it's about time we go and find some evidence for all the bad stuff uter has been doing, right? She already said we shouldn't disturb her over the next couple of days. We can check in with her again once she's done with all the new designs! But the show's in another two days, isn't it? Will she be able to make the deadline? She wants to first beat Uter fair and square at the show, and then defeat him in the court of public opinion. She said that it'd be like... uh... A two-pronged approach? Courtesy first, confrontation second. 
Uh, yeah, something like that. Understood. Then we'll have faith in her decision. We'll go make some preparations. See you at the venue in two days. Alright, we're counting on you! Okay, then let's also do as Shuri said, and meet up with her at Uter's factory in two days. We'll gather the evidence then. Oh, Paimon sure hopes she won't have a hard time making all those new outfits for the show. <laughs> You're here. Chiori! How are the new outfits coming along? Uh, you look kinda tired. Just a few steps left now. I've handed the rest over to Ilof. We should be able to make tonight's show. Wow, that's cutting it real close. Are you sure she'll be okay without you? Don't worry. I have no intention of giving ground on either front. With the fashion show scheduled for tonight, Uter has closed his factory. This is our only chance to secure any incriminating evidence. Okay, Paimon totally gets that this is all his fault and he totally deserves it, but... Wouldn't we technically be trespassing on his property if we just barge in like this? His factory is usually open to the public. It may not be open for business right now, but that doesn't mean visitors can stop by for a tour. We're just curious customers after all, aren't we? Well, when you put it that way... Anyway, Uter's factory is right over there. Let's hurry up and get moving. Uh, why would he open a factory over there? We have different marketing strategies. While I specialize in high-end custom garments, he prefers low prices and large sales volumes. I don't know. Maybe the rent here is cheap. All right. Ooh, it's really creepy. Hyman would never choose to buy anything from a place like that. You make a good point. Let's all be on our guard. There's nobody here.
Welcome to your visitors. Ah! Oh, Paimon nearly fell out of the air. What is that thing? A mechanical guide. They usually use a recorded tape to give you a tour of the factory. Please, follow me, dear guests. First stop on our tour is a look at the gradual evolution of our clothing brand. After that, we welcome you to peruse our most popular styles. Huh. Gautier seems to be doing pretty well for himself, doesn't he? Why would he feel the need to bother you when he could just focus on improving his own brand? This is the studio where our designs are made. Please, take a look around at your leisure. Yep, this seems like Uter's workspace, all right. Let's see what we can find. These are the fitting rooms. Please use them at your leisure. Huh? There seems to be something in this fitting room. Uh, why did the door just close? Hold on tight, Paimon. Seems to have stopped. Where did this thing take us? It seems like we're someplace deeper inside the factory. Breaking news! Smile! Right!
This place is filthy! Are the clothes from Uter's shop seriously made here? <sighs> Look over there. Ooh, that water looks super nasty! <laughs> oh, Paimon can smell the stench from all the way over here. <laughs> and I was the one using unsafe materials, Uter? So he was actually the one who opened an underground factory. No wonder his clothes always felt weird to the touch. He's been using all manner of tricks here in a bid to cut costs. Should... should the clothes made here even be worn? Never mind issues with shrinking and fading. These materials can give you skin problems if you wear them too often. That's terrifying! Let's take some photos right away as evidence. He won't be able to try and deny anything in court. All right, let's keep going. Huh? Does it look like there's a path here? Follow me. Let's go up. He knew we'd be coming. You did say he knew you really well, didn't you? Yes. And that's because... We used to be partners. Wait, you're practically at each other's throats! Now you're telling us you used to work together? When I first came to Fontaine, we were both fledgling designers who longed to gain a foothold in the world of fashion. We shared the same goal, so we decided to work together. In the beginning, we both wanted to make clothes that would stand out from the crowd and shatter tradition. The kind of clothes that would turn heads and leave people in awe. But with every criticism we received, and every sponsor that rejected us, Uter's confidence disappeared little by little. Finally, right before Fashion Week, he came to the conclusion that we wouldn't be able to make the designs we always dreamed of. And we parted ways. For my part, I gambled it all and devoted everything I had to that one week. I came out the other side with something that really made me proud. I was nervous to present it, of course, but I knew it was my chance to show the industry what I was made of. In the end, well... You received the acclaim of all Fontaine while Uter gave up on his dream and turned to making this sketchy stuff. I don't know the exact details of what happened after that. All I know is... After I opened Chiore Boutique, he's harassed me every year since. <laughs> he's just jealous of what you've accomplished. A guy like that doesn't deserve your sympathy. Well, let's focus on getting out of here first. Missing the show is as good as letting him win. Uh, there are some control panels over there. Let's see if any of those buttons do anything. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't seem to have done anything. Uh, maybe try the next one? Ah, that didn't do anything either. Warning. Warning. Unauthorized intruders. 
way out. Maybe we can use these mechanisms to get higher. Those chambers couldn't hold you, I see. What a surprise. We've collected a bunch of evidence on all the nasty stuff happening at your factory. You're not getting away this time, Uter. The evidence on your person, you mean. <laughs> what makes you think I have any intention of letting it get past these walls? More mechanical guards? Really? Ever thought about using these funds for a legitimate purpose? Oh, but this is a legitimate purpose. What? Destroying Chioria Boutique? Or continuing to make your rotten rags? Proving that fashion is merely a laughable farce. A carnival of ignorance! <laughs> you know what your problem is, Uter? You've become so obsessed with the concept of fashion itself, that you let it paralyze you. Stop trying to cater to it. Focus on your own work, and you get to decide what fashion means. Spare me the lecture, why don't you? Sooner or later, you'll cater to all the voices too, you know. After all, what is fashion but another form of public opinion? Fashion is about aspiring towards a certain ideal. 
but it's up to you to decide what it is. My brand caters to no one but myself and my vision. That's my ideal, and it's not going to change. <laughs> well, once the people witness their former darling's spectacular fall, they'll understand how laughable that ideal truly is. That's what you've been trying to prove all this time? Your jaded understanding of the industry is the reason you've had it out for my brand for so long? <laughs> You weren't like this before, Uter. What happened to the man who wanted to make something that would bring the entire world to its knees? He realized long ago how utterly naive and ridiculous that dream was. You gave up on your dream. But that wasn't enough, was it? You had to find a way to prove to yourself that it could never have been possible at all. You think you understand. But you're just a bitter man who let his regrets dictate his choices. You regret giving up on your dream. So you stopped at nothing to prove to yourself that it wasn't the wrong choice. This whole thing, Uter. It's pathetic. Pathetic? Why don't you take a look in the mirror? You're a fool daydreaming about taking all of Tevat by storm. Well, good luck doing that when even Fontaine doesn't have a place for you anymore. <sighs> You're right. Maybe all those who pursue their dreams are fools. But more pitiful still are cowards who are too afraid to even attempt what the fool is brave enough to try. You! Yeah, just leave this guy to us! No, you go instead. But he has a gun! It'll be fine. Just go to the venue and tell everyone to proceed with the plan. I'll deal with him. Some lessons... are best delivered in person. Catch up with us soon! Trying to leave, are we? I've held back all this time because of our past partnership, Uter. <laughs> but all that changed after our tour of your factory. <laughs> Still trying to talk tough, I see. No matter what you've been through, no matter why you've become like this. If I may borrow the words of a friend, a guy like you doesn't deserve my sympathy. <laughs> Allow me to show you the true meaning of the Chioria brand. The Chioria brand represents more than a person or a trademark. It's a way of life. Huh? Greetings, friends at Fontaine Fashion Week! Please feast your eyes on the extravaganza that Chioria Boutique has prepared for you today! <laughs> Brilliant, dazzling, and wholly unique. And most importantly, an enduring, never-say-die spirit. That's the true meaning of the Chioria brand. And now, let's welcome the thundering seamstress, Miss Chiori herself! Did Chiori not... Let the, the show, show begin. begin. The world may change, fashion along with it, but Chioria will remain the same. No challenge is too great. Chioria caters to no one. Not even the times. Rather, Chioria will always lead the fashion of our time. Finally, let's not forget. Only those who do not give up on their dreams are worthy of this brand. 
Well then, I suppose all that's left to say is... Happy Fashion Week, fellow dreamers. to the left like this mm, perfect Phew. oh that looks great miss jury can i take a picture of course i didn't know you'd make a brand new signboard i made it before fashion week i figured it'd be best to put it up after the success of the show well how can you become renowned through all of Tevat without a fancy signboard of your own? The spin is way ahead of you in that regard. Now that you mention it, perhaps our magic troupe could use one of those. Hmm. Our signatures are the Grin Malkin Cat and the Boggle Cat Box. Oh, and we need to add Pear as well. Pear would need an alias, of course. Hmm. How about. Ah, uh, the Hangry Bird. <laughs> so, does that mean your signboard is going to be two cats and a penguin stuffed into a single hat? Ooh, that sounds super snuggly and warm. And a bit cramped. Miss Yuri, I'm done taking pictures. You can expect the article in tomorrow's Steambird, along with the evidence the traveler gathered. Thank you, Charlotte. It's my pleasure. Bringing the truth to light is a journalist's duty. Going forward, feel free to custom order any accessories you need for Monsieur Verite. It's on the house. Huh? huh? You... you really mean it? Of course. The same goes for you too, Linny and Lynette. If you have need of any costumes in the future, just drop me a note. What about something other than a costume? Thank you, Chiori. It's much appreciated. Well, I don't really need anything. Just don't be a stranger, alright? I don't need anything either. So long as you continue to request my international courier services from Komania Express, we're golden. Actually, that reminds me. When will you be leaving, Kirara? Huh? Um, about that. The Spina di Rosula has prepared a special vehicle for you, so you can just get in and we'll push it all the way out of Fontaine. What? No, that's so embarrassing. Ooh, do we get something nice too, Chiori? Of course. Just hold on a second. Disrupting public order at the show. Appropriating venue lighting equipment without authorization. Using weaponry in public. Hosting a dangerous performance without notifying the authorities. Um, Chevras, we can explain! If you come across anyone who matches those descriptions, please report them to the Special Patrol at your earliest convenience. Enjoyed that, didn't you? <sighs> you nearly scared me half to death. Says the one who pulled that stunt earlier. How about you do me a favor and tell me in advance next time you're planning something like that? And if I had, would you have approved? No, but it would have at least spared me a whole lot of anxiety. Well, I would say I more than made it up to you, have I not? A whole underground workshop in the Fluve Sandra and the man responsible all tied up and handed to you on a silver platter. Sounds pretty thoughtful if you ask me. All right, I won't argue with you. You can have this one. Well, friends, I would say we've earned ourselves a nice meal for our efforts. Let's go. Spina's treat. I'll have to take a rain check. I've still got a lot of paperwork to take care of, so you all go have fun. Oh, by the way, Chiori, I ran into Vanger on the way here. He had a message for you. I don't need to hear it. I'm sure the old fool used pretty much every apology in the book. I'll just visit him some other day and give him a hard time about everything. <laughs> you know him well. Thanks again, Shelfrus. My pleasure. Oh, and one last thing. That was really quite an amazing show. You don't say. Alright, alright. Uh, follow me if you want in on the celebration feast. Come on, we're leaving. Traveler, Paimon, could you go wait for me at that place with the view? I'll let Navia know that we'll be a little late. There's something I'd like to give you. A place with the view? Oh, Paimon knows where you mean. Sure, no problem. 
problem. Perfect. I'll be right there. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, we didn't wait long at all. But what did you want to give us that you couldn't share right in front of everyone else? Here, take this. Oh, wow! A brooch! And in the style of Chiria Boutique, too! <gasps> wait, Paimon gets one as well? I've only made two for now. After much consideration, I decided to give them to you two. You've been a great help. Even when things were looking bleak, you stayed by my side. There were even times when I felt like I had to fight back and win. Even if it was just to honor the trust that you had in me. Well, we may have helped a little, but Paimon would say you deserve most of the credit. This result, it was all you, Chiori! I know for certain that was not the case. I've chased my dream for so long that I've come to understand something. Apart from conviction and persistence, the thing that matters most is having friends who believe in you even when you don't believe in yourself. A single person can only do so much. Without all your help, Chioria Boutique could have easily fallen to ruin. Well, Paimon doesn't think it would have ever gotten to that point. Not if you had anything to say about it. But... Um, about the stuff you said at the show, you aren't worried it'll rub some people the wrong way? Perhaps my words were a little pretentious, but they do reflect how I truly feel. I won't bow or scrape before any force in this world, much less any individual. I'm confident in the quality of my work. Create something beautiful and there will always be people who appreciate it. Well, guess there's nothing to worry about then. Should we go back and join them at the victory feast? Oh, yes, of course. But before that, I'd like to admire the view for just a little while longer. You know, of all the nights I've spent in Fontaine, I'd say this is the loveliest by far.
anything else more interesting?